Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff. And in today's video, we are looking at a new feature in Cricut Design Space called Warp. If you're watching this video when it first comes out, you will probably have to have the beta version to see this. To do that, go up to the hamburger menu in the left, click settings, and then make sure you have the beta application experience checked. Note that if this says live and then you change it to beta, anything you're working on will be lost. So go ahead and make sure you save any projects that you're working on before switching over to beta. If you're watching this a while after this feature has come out, um, it will probably be moved to the regular feature set very soon, so you may not even need to turn beta on. This tool is only available to Cricut Access members. Cricut has really been pushing people to join Cricut Access, and they keep adding these tools that are available only with Cricut Access to sort of incentivize people to join. Um, so if you're a Cricut Access member, you should have access to this in the beta version. Um, if you are not a Cricut Access member, you won't be able to use it. This feature works with both Cricut fonts and with your own system fonts. So you can just use the text tool over here on the left to add some text to your canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here and make it just a little bit bigger. So if you have your text selected, you'll see 24 different options when you click warp. Honestly, some of these are better than others. Um, there are some that I think are almost unreadable, but you'll have to play around with whatever text you're using. So let's just click through a few so you can kind of get an idea of what you can do with this. This creates an arc. This one here is sort of a fisheye lens. This one here looks like a fish itself. <laughs> um, I like these sort of flag ones that kind of rise and fall. I find these triangles um, almost unreadable. That T becomes very small. Um, I don't really love it. Um, same thing with this going off into the distance. This T does, doesn't even look like a T. It looks sort of like an arrow. But the one below that sort of shoots off into a distance in a way that's readable. So you can go ahead and click around with these and kind of figure out which ones you like, which ones you don't like, and what might be good for your project. To remove a warp, all you have to do is click the warp um, itself. It'll turn it off, or you can click down here, undo warp, and it turns it off. I have found that I think that the text warp tool looks better when you're using words in all caps. So I'm going to change our word here to the word sunshine in all caps. Now, if I use some of these tools, bring it down here so you can see this looks a lot better, right? But some of these still don't work. Like this triangle here, what, what's happening with this E? That is unreadable and pretty much uncuttable. I feel like your Cricut, um, as good as it is, would not cut that E very well. Um, so maybe if you had a, a much simpler letter down here, that would work. But this E just does not work. Same thing again with this disappearing into the distance. We don't even know what that word says. Um, I'm not really sure when you might use this, but it's there if you want it. Now let's go back to this first arc. And you may be wondering what the difference is between this and the curve tool. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Remove the warp on the second one. And we're going to use the curve tool instead. I'll go ahead and click the curve tool. And then with this little slider, I can change um, how much it curves here. So you'll notice that there is a difference here. The warp tool actually warps your text, whereas the um, curve tool, it just curves your um, your current letters around sort of a circle. You can see up here in the first one that the text is actually warped. So the top bars on this H is wider than the lower bars down here. This N sort of shoots out farther than it does here, as well as the U here, it's much wider than it is at the bottom here. So while these two tools are similar, there is definitely a difference between the warp tool and the curve tool. So when I was playing around with this tool originally, I wanted to see if I could create one of those sort of 70s retro designs that are really popular right now. So I'm going to create a three line uh, text here with the same word. And then I'm going to choose a retro font. So I like um, the one I have here on my computer, it's called Nelly. I think that's really cute. This is a style that's really popular right now. We're going to need to take down that line spacing because the amount of space between the lines is just too much for this type of design. So I'm going to go with negative five. And then I'm going to use the warp tool. Let's try this flag. So what you get here is what you get. There's no way to adjust the amount of warp. With the curve tool, you can change the amount of curve, but with the warp tool, it is what it is. So I think this is a bit extreme. I don't really love how some of these letters are being stretched. Some of the options are better than others. Um, we can go back to this triangle that I don't like and um, it gets even worse. Like what is going on over here on the right? This is pretty terrible. Um, but something more like this, that's not great, but it's not so bad. Um, something like this, 
Okay, maybe if we go here and we rotate it. Yeah, sure, I might put that on a shirt. I'm not sure. We could also choose one of these flags. Like, that's pretty cute. I might put that on a shirt. I have a lot of files like this in my shop, and the way I create them is in Illustrator. And while I don't think it's necessary that most designers have Illustrator, if you are interested in creating these particular types of designs, it's very easy in Illustrator. So I'm actually going to pop over there really quickly, just show you how easy it is, just in case you're thinking that Illustrator might be a good upgrade for you. All right, so in Illustrator, I've put the same words in that same font. And if I go up here to Effect and choose Warp Flag, I will basically get that same shape. And here, I also agree that it dips way down way too far and goes way too high up. But in Illustrator, I can actually make changes. I can lessen the amount of bend. This looks much better to me. Like it's much more readable. I like it a lot more. And there are other changes you can make here, like changing the amount of distortion. Um, but overall, like making changes like this is really easy. They also have one here called Wave, which I think is really, really popular these days. You kind of fit the, the three or more words um, in sort of this square shape. So the center word is sort of normal. The top word fills in that space where it dips down and the bottom word fills in that space where it goes up. And I just think this is a really popular way to make files these days. There are a ton of different options here, just like there are in Cricut Design Space. They are just so much more robust. So if you are going to be making your own designs, um, I do feel like having something like Illustrator is probably a better option than trying to create these designs within Cricut Design Space. All right, we're back in Cricut Design Space and I wanted to point out a few other things here. The first is that you can't change the um, different colors here individually. So for instance, if I change this to yellow, it's all yellow. There's no way for me to click in here and change the colors individually. If I just choose one single line, I can't change it, the color is blocked out. You'll also see here that you can't flatten it, but if you want to make it a print then cut, you can go up here to operation and choose print then cut. And that will make it a print then cut file that you can print. So to get around the fact that you can't make multiple line warps um, in different colors, you can make separate warps. So here I have sunshine again, and I'm going to go ahead and warp it here with this um, little flag here. And then I'm just going to copy and paste and they fit together nicely. Just like this. And then I can go here and I can choose a line center horizontally. And I can also distribute them so that they are equal up and down. Now I can change each one individually. We can give these sort of a sunset colors here. And now that is a really cute file. You can also change these lines individually then. So maybe you want, um, instead of this sort of flag shape, you want the flag that sort of goes up. So you can change that one and then you can change this one again, and then you can change this one as well. And again, you have a pretty cute design. So the question is, do I like the warp tool? And my answer is, eh, it's okay. Um, I do feel like there is a lot of room for improvement. I think my biggest beef is that you can't change the amount of warp um, because I really feel like that would make it much more robust and you can do a lot more with it. Um, something like Illustrator makes this just so much easier and coming from an Adobe Illustrator background, I am a little frustrated that I can't do things quite as easily. Um, but if you are looking to do something like the sunshine file here, it is totally doable. It just takes a little bit more work. If you have any questions about using the warp tool, I would be happy to answer them in the comments. If you use the warp tool, I would love to know what you think about it. If you found this video helpful, I would love for you to give it a like. Subscribe to my channel for more weekly content. I'll see you next week.